Hello, my name is Thiago, I'm from Brazil, São Paulo, and this is my week one assignment to music production, available at Coursera.org. On timber. Even if a piano and a guitar plays the same note at the same loudness, we can easily identify them. That's because their timbres are different. What I want to show you now is that the timbre is linked to the distribution of normal modes we find in spectral analysis. In special, this subject tricks me since forever, so I wanted to go a little further on this topic and get my hands dirty. By this, I mean I will actually show you some recordings that, I, that I've got in freesound.org and show the spectral analysis of them. To do so, I have used Ardor as digital audio workstation and FreakTweak to record spectrogram time series. Let's start with the basics. Here we see some examples of sound wave profiles. In horizontal axis you have time and in vertical axis magnitude. The amplitude is the height in vertical axis and the frequency, the times per second, this profile repeats. For instance, the red wave has the lower frequency. These waves are all called sinusoidal waves. When we think of waves, we usually picture this beautiful smooth oscillation, but both amplitude and frequency could in principle be defined for other kinds of patterns. This in fact is what changes timbre. It is clearly independent from both amplitude and frequency. What is unexpected is that a given wave, such as this kind of square wave, can be described by a sum of sinusoidal waves. In fact, if we choose wisely the right combination of amplitudes and frequencies, such as this, we can reconstruct almost every function or wave pattern. This clever choice is depicted in this animation and is named a full heat transform of the wave. So whenever I show you a picture like this, what in fact I'm telling you is the right combination of amplitudes for each frequency that you can use to reconstruct your signal. Although I will not focus on this second property, there is also the wave envelope. It changes the wave by means of, for instance, 1. Attack time, time taken for initial run-up of level, 2. The decay time, time taken for a subsequent run-down, and 3. The sustain level, the level during the main sequence of sound. Here we see an example from Casio. Let's put this into some action. As I mentioned, I have configured Ardor and FreakTweak to read the spectrogram of some recordings. Let's start with a sine wave. This is now a trivial case, since from what I've told you about Fourier transform, this can be described by only one peak. You see a big peak and other stuff which is related to the discretization of a sine wave. Now I will add a white noise. It's a random signal which excites all frequencies at equal foot. Let's hear it. In fact, the pitch haven't changed, although a lot of new frequencies show up in the spectral analysis. Next, let's use this square wave which repeats the same times per second as the previous one. Although it sounds like the same pitch, there's a whole new sequence of frequencies being excited here. In fact, the higher contribution is given by the same frequency as before, and is therefore called the fundamental mode. Let's change the waveform again, a sawtooth wave. Again, the, s the pitch seems the same, but the spectrum shows different relative amplitudes. Up to now, we have seen that the appearance of new peaks in the spectrum changes the timbre, while the pitch keeps unchanged. Next, I will show you the spectrogram of some instruments that you certainly identify. Finally, I want to show you a cat meow. Luckily, I have found another recording from the same cat and we see something very interesting. They both present the same frequency peaks, although they are clearly different. We see that the frequency peaks, other than the fundamental mode, is clearly a signature of the sound source.
Just to illustrate this concept of using frequency stream for some hidden information, this has been used in spectroscopy over the years under a wide variety of methods. Basically, a spectrometer separates at different wavelengths and a detector measures their amplitudes color by color. Then, using the resulting spectrum, it's often possible to understand chemical reactions, physical processes, and so on. Let me close this talk by recalling some concluding remarks. We have seen that the pitch of a sound is not described by all frequencies in a spectrogram, but only by the first frequency and usually by the strong amplitude. All the rest will determine the timber. Having this said, it's obvious that equalizers may change a timber of an instrument, which is a fairly common error in non-experienced musicians. Finally, the envelope can also change the timbre and is effectively used to tune the timbre as desired. I hope this helps clarify something and thank you for your attention.